The mob. It's a multi-billion dollar a year enterprise. Gambling, loan sharking, drug trafficking, racketeering, all tools of the trade for the five organized crime families. Tonight, former New York City police detective Frank Grimes begins a series of special reports on the mafia, how it operates, where the bosses make the deals. Where the mob lives, we begin with a look at the Genovese crime family and the most powerful boss of them all. This is Al Pacino and Marlon Brando playing mafia kingpins in Hollywood's The Godfather. <laughs> this is Anthony Fat Tony Salerno. For him, the role of mafia boss is no act. Law enforcement officials say he runs the Genovese organized crime family and that he is the richest and most powerful of the mob bosses. Lieutenant Remo Franceschini has been chasing the Mafia for 25 of the 30 years he's been a New York City cop. He's not just a, a fly-by-night. He has been a boss in that family for 25 years. And uh, his position uh, is his ability to control uh, large gambling operations. And he accumulated a great deal of wealth in that position. But right now, Fat Tony's in jail. He's on trial in federal court, accused of being a member of the Mafia's commission. Organized Crimes Board of Directors. Experts say the man guarding Tony's power and wealth is the Genovese family's number two man, Chin Giganti, the brother of well-known priest Father Louis Giganti. Chin operates out of this social club on Sullivan Street in Little Italy, just two doors from where he lives. Well, organized crime uh, people uh, have to have a place to meet. And they usually go back to their roots, they usually go back to the neighborhoods where they feel safe to send. Fat Tony's roots are in East Harlem. It's here, around 115th Street and 1st Avenue, where Tony made his bones, gained respect and power. There used to be a phone booth on this corner at 116th Street and 1st Avenue. The FBI had it bugged. It was blown up. Before Fat Tony went to jail, he routinely held his meetings here, the Palmer Boys Social Club on East 115th Street, half a block from his apartment. Three days a week, Fat Tony Solerno, mafia boss, lived above this fruit store on First Avenue in East Harlem. But he only lived there from Monday to Wednesday. The rest of the week and the weekends, he moved north to his other home, a place far from East Harlem in more ways than one. This is Fat Tony's estate in Rhinebeck, New York. Neat white buildings with green shutters and a corral for horses make up Fat Tony's Spruce Bar Ranch. People from the area board their horses there. When I went to ask two of them what they thought of Tony as a rancher, I ran into some resistance. Come on, you have to leave. Oh, I just want to talk I'm to you, sir. Sorry, leave. Okay. <laughs> Tony's property is about six miles from downtown Rhinebeck's only traffic light. Lee, the cab driver, says that to the 5,000 people who live here, Fat Tony is just another neighbor. They feel Tony's life in New York City's streets and courtrooms doesn't touch them. In fact, Lee says some in town look forward to seeing Fat Tony and his ever present cigar make a local appearance. Frank, this Red Hook Inn, under previous management, Tony used to come here for dinner and the waitresses loved him. He never left the tip of less than $50. Fat Tony Salerno, full-time mobster, part-time gentleman rancher, the day the FBI took him away from Rhinebeck and East Harlem. You got to say, Tony? Right now, Fat Tony is living here, the Metropolitan Correctional Facility in Lower Manhattan. But he's not the only accused mob boss staying there. John Gotti also calls this home. Tomorrow, he's the man, uh, law enforcement officials say, who runs the Gambino crime family. Tomorrow night on the 10 o'clock news, I'll show you where John Gotti lives when he's not in jail. You'll also hear what some of his neighbors think about living so close to the man who allegedly runs the mafia's largest and most powerful crime family. Reporting live from Lower Manhattan, I'm Frank Grimes. See you tomorrow night. Back to you, John. Another hit that made big headlines occurred outside the Sparks Steakhouse 11 months ago. Paul Castellano was a target then, and his murder changed the face of organized crime's most powerful family, the Gambinos. Tonight, in part two of his special report on where the mob lives, former New York City police detective Frank Grimes takes a close-up look at the man they call the Dapper Don.
This is how many people in the mafia retire. Last December, some in the Gambino crime family thought the boss, Paul Castellano, had been in power long enough. He and his number two man, Tommy Bellotti, were retired in front of a Manhattan restaurant. But this is also how many people in the mafia get promoted. With Castellano and Bellotti out of the way, alleged Gambino family capo John Gotti seized power. Law enforcement officials say he's the man who now heads the mafia's largest and most powerful crime family. Gotti carries that prestige with a flair that has attracted a lot of publicity. He seems to enjoy it. He strides past reporters and cameras, his head held high, his body wrapped in expensive suits. One report said each suit cost $1,000. Gotti supposedly got angry. The suits cost $1,800. John Gotti, a man with the label mob boss, lives with his wife and children in this house in a middle-class neighborhood in Howard Beach, Queens. Private security patrols routinely canvass the quiet streets. No one was at home at the Gotti house on this rainy day, so I talked to neighbors. I asked how they felt about living near the man who law enforcement officials say killed people to get to the top. I'm not afraid. In fact, I feel safer. You feel safer? I sure do. <laughs> Why is that? My cars have been stolen in every area but this one. <laughs> Others on Gotti's blog said the only time they see him is on TV or in the newspapers. They had no comment beyond that. But Gotti's next door neighbor had this to say. I'll tell you something, they're the most beautiful people you can meet. This is where Gotti hangs out. The Bergen Hunt and Fish Club on 101st Street in Ozone Park. Law enforcement officials say it's Gotti's headquarters, a place for meetings, deals. The FBI bugged it, so it's quiet here now. The folks oh in this neighborhood God, don't see much of John story. Gotti these days. But they remember. That's the best man around, and I'm 45 years old, the best man for me. I've known him as a youngster and always as a gentleman. Whenever I see him walking, he always has a marvelous smile on his face. In fact, I admire the way he dresses. But John Gotti's suits aren't getting much wear right now. He's in jail, on trial in Brooklyn Federal Court for racketeering. Some in the family may look for him to retire. Although Lieutenant Remo Franceschini of the New York City Police Department says when mob bosses are in jail, their position sometimes gets stronger, as long as they don't stay in jail for too long. Because they have many hours to think about their structure and about who's loyal and who's disloyal. And they have a constant communication going in and out of there you know, to let them know who is loyal to them and who's not. According to law enforcement officials, there are three men who stand out as Gotti loyalists. Sal Gravano. Joseph Butch Correo and Joseph Armone. Officials say Armone has a long history with the Gambino family and an extensive arrest record to prove it. He lives here in this row of houses on 92nd Street in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. I went there to try to speak with Armone. He wasn't in, but his wife told me the only business Joe is in is the fruit business. In a fruit business. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. You can take it from me because I'm his wife. All these organized crime people have uh, some sort of a basis uh, for, uh, for employment. They, they use, uh, in, in many cases, uh, you know, cover employment. Uh, but the fact of the matter is their, their employment is, uh, is illegal activity, criminal activity. If federal prosecutors can convince a Brooklyn jury that that is true of John Gotti, he may go to jail long enough where he loses his power slowly, instead of all at once on a sidewalk. On tomorrow night's 10 o'clock news, in the third and final part of my series on where the mob lives, I'll take you to the homes and neighborhoods of the top bosses of the Lucchese, Bonanno, and Colombo organized crime families. Reporting live from outside Sparks Steakhouse on East 46th Street in Manhattan, I'm Frank Grimes. I'll see you tomorrow night. Back to the studio. Loan sharking, drugs, grisly murders, hits, part of everyday life in the brutal world of organized crime. And all this week, former New York City detective Frank Grimes, a reporter for us now, has been profiling men like John Gotti, Fat Tony Salerno, two of the alleged mafia's most powerful bosses. Tonight, Frank takes a close-up look at the other crime families in his report on where the mob lives. <laughs> The familiar sounds of a familiar game here in Diker Heights, Brooklyn. Bocce ball. Played by men looking to keep tradition alive. Tradition is also important to one of the most well-known residents of Diker Heights, Carmine Persico. But his tradition is no game. It's the Mafia. He heads the Colombo organized crime family. He lives in this house on 11th Avenue in Diker Heights. 
A large brick home that sits high up on the corner of 85th Street. His next door neighbor told me her kids play with Persico's grandkids in this house. Sue De Prima lives across the street from Persico. They're just normal people like all of us. He had, that's, I guess, his job, you know, like someone's a butcher, whatever. I'm not saying whether I agree with it or I don't. It's just his way, the way my way is my way. Mafia experts say it's important to mob bosses to keep their business activity away from where they live. Lieutenant Remo Franceschini of the New York City Police Department. Number one, it protects them to a certain degree, you know, to, to have a good image in, in, his, in his area. And it uh, prevents uh, his family, you know, from being uh, shunned. For the Persico family, the possibility of being shunned is the least of their worries. Two days ago, 53-year-old Carmine Persico was sentenced to 39 years in prison for racketeering as boss of the Colombo crime family. On top of that, today, a federal jury in Manhattan convicted Persico of being a member of the Mafia's commission, Organized Crime's board of directors. Also convicted with Persico today were his underboss, Gennaro Jerry Langlangella, who only last week was sentenced to 65 years in jail for racketeering, and Ralph Scopo, a Colombo family capo who was president of the Cement Workers Union. Another mob boss convicted in the commission trial with Persico was Anthony Tony Ducks Corallo. He runs the Lucchese crime family. Also convicted with Corallo was his underboss, Salvatore Tom Mick Santoro. Santoro and Tony Ducks have been associated with the Lucchese crime family for many years. Tony Ducks, uh, the nickname Ducks is supposedly through the street uh, uh, information is that he ducked so many subpoenas in his life when in, in his uh, younger days. Corallo, it, it was always considered a, uh, a, a person that had the ability to make large sums of money for, for the Lucchese crime family. Officials believe it was some of that money that helped pay for this house Corallo lives in on Grace Lane in exclusive Oyster Bay Cove, Long Island. It's a secluded street just off the Pine Hollow Country Club. Corallo's sprawling ranch house and grounds fit right in with the homes of his neighbors. However, past surveillances of Corallo's home by a noisy FBI helicopter apparently don't fit in with his neighbor's idea of privacy. And I'm pretty sure the, the people from the neighborhood, they, uh, they was a little upset. Back in Brooklyn on Vandevoort Avenue, the constant sound of passing trucks. This is home for Philip Rusty Rustelli, the man who heads the banana crime family. Rastelli is a sick man. On this day, he collapsed in a courtroom. He lives in this industrial section of Bushwick, Brooklyn, with his family. His niece told me her uncle has cancer. Last month, Rastelli was convicted in federal court of racketeering. He'll be sentenced in December. Law enforcement officials say the man running the Bonanno family for Rastelli is Joseph Messina. Joe Messina is a, uh, is a younger, a uh, very respected uh, organized crime figure and involved with members of the other families. Messina lives in Howard Beach, Queens, just a few blocks from John Gotti, the alleged boss of the Gambino crime family. Messina was home the day I went to his house, but his wife said they weren't interested in talking to me. Law enforcement officials have watched and listened to Bonanno family members talking in places along 18th Avenue in Brooklyn. It's in cafes and social clubs here that they discuss business. Organized crime is really structured for one reason, economics. It's economy. It's how much money they can make you know, through illegal means or any means. But money is the basis for organized crime. 